Um, first of all, we're going to talk about uh, the new Arrow film. This is a new release from Arrow Video. If you don't know Arrow Video, um, it is a video company that's been around for a good number of years. They're a British-based company, but they also release titles in America. Due to licensing and rights issues, some things are British only, some are both British and America, and some are just America. It's interesting. Um, their company, they're much, I always say Arrow is my criterion. Arrow releases films that are older, usually, and they do new transfers, they do deluxe supplements, they port supplements over from previous versions of films. You get a nice collector's booklet with writings on the film, and you get a nice cool original artwork cover. Um, so Arrow has been releasing things for a while in the US. Um, genre films, what we refer to as genre films, which are horror, sci-fi, action, all kinds of oddball stuff. And the occasional mainstream thing, they put out a really good version of A Fish Called Wanda. They put out Weird Science, 16 Candles. So they're kind of all over the place, but um, you can count on Arrow for quality in terms of visual presentation. There's, there's never gonna be a better edition up to the point Arrow releases something than Arrow. Maybe someday somebody will better them, but not yet. Anyway, I'm here to tell you about, I'm gonna go over there because we set up two cameras. So the first thing I have to talk about is this film from Japan in 1968 from Toei Studios. You had your Toho who did uh, the Godzilla films. They're mostly known for the Godzilla, the giant monster films. They did other stuff too. And then you had Toei, which did a slightly lower end, slightly a bit sleazier, uh, more action oriented stuff like that. We have a film about a young woman who, in order to pay off a debt in olden days Japan, Edo, not Edo, olden days Japan, she uh, enters into a geisha house to serve as a geisha and serve men to pay off her debt, only to find that it is not the, the simple and classy type of geisha house. It's kind of a rough and tumble, gruesome, horrifying, uh, uh, well, inferno of torture. And this is the point where we would play the trailer. But there is a trailer for this film. If you go onto YouTube and look up Inferno of Torture, there's a trailer. It was so loaded with nudity and violence that if I cut that trailer down to, be, to pass muster on local TV, um, there wouldn't be anything left. So I'm just gonna swing back over to this camera. He, man, set it up, I might as well use it. And talk to you about Inferno of Torture. So Arrow has put out a few films like this. Orgies of Edo, or Edo, was another film they had released from the same director. And these are sleazy and gruesome Japanese exploitation films of the late 60s. So they've, they look great. They're blazing color, nicely stylishly shot, uh, usually a pretty cool, funky, you know, fuzz guitar kind of soundtrack. And they're a lot of fun if you like American exploitation films. These have an edge to them. These tend to have a kind of a nasty edge to them. Um, the opening, I was, I was reading to Rick before we started recording, I was reading him what I had for notes for this film to sort of refresh my memory because it's been a few weeks since I've seen it. This is out now from Arrow, by the way, on Blu-ray, so you can get this anywhere finder discs are sold. Um, the opening sequence was so gruesome, I feel like I can't even talk about it on TV. It was basically a whole lot of, of geysering bloodshed and nudity and iconography and things that would make any, f the opening sequence alone, I mean, I'm talking about under the credits before the story even starts, is stronger stuff and more extreme stuff than you see in, in an entire feature in other cases. So uh, that set me up and knowing about Japanese cinema and pinku films and, edgy Japanese movies then and now, I was expecting this to be a pretty rough ride. At times it is. Um, it's really these sort of little tales about what this woman goes through and other women in the geisha house. There's a tattoo artist who wants to become the greatest tattoo artist, so he's doing this long form tattoo on a woman. Um, all the women are tattooed. A lot of the tattoos represent various violent and subversive and perverse acts. And then you have the clients who are at this uh, brothel, essentially, with the geishas and what they like to do. So it's not, it's not explicit sexually at all, because it really couldn't be in Japan at that point, but they make up for that in the perversity and the violence. So if you are into that sort of thing, if you know this genre of film, um, then um, Inferno of Torture from 1968 is, is more of that. It's very... I hesitate to say classily done, but it's very artistically done. There's some really cool shots, much like Orgies of Edo, where there's a sequence where these people are in this, uh, this medieval times, I'm talking about the restaurant, not the era, medieval times looking <clears throat> arena, 
all these Japanese men are there and all these geisha are dressed in these blazing red robes in this arena. And then they release the bull. Um, th it's that kind of stuff. It's really like artistic and weird and kind of gruesome. So uh, I think if you're of one of tender sensibilities, if uh, <clears throat> memories of a geisha is more of your speed, I would say Inferno of Torture, probably not something you want to watch. But if you like oddball, kind of borderline horror, exploitation, softcore stuff, then uh, Inferno of Torture is, is, is pretty decent. It's, and again, it's not as gruesome as I expected it would be. Going into the 80s, when films were allowed to be a bit more explicit in terms of gore <clears throat> and content, it would, those films would become a much harder watch. Inferno of Torture wasn't that bad. It just had its moments where I was like, wow, I can't talk about this on TV. So Inferno of Torture has a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a commentary track by a Japanese film historian that sort of sets the, the stage for that period in Japanese history, that period uh, in the late 60s of what was going on in Japanese film and you know <clears throat> all the threads that wove together to make a film like this you get an explanation for that um, there's also <clears throat> a nice long form video essay about that genre of film it's basically it's a lecture someone gave that's a videotape that's on the dvd sorry the blu-ray and there's there's a good amount of supplements it's not one of those that's so loaded you're going to spend a week watching this stuff i think if you enjoyed Inferno of Torture or were so perplexed by it you needed an explanation, uh, and one evening sit down would, would take care of it all. And it's not an incredibly long film either. My memory is that it's, it's somewhere in around the 90, 100 minute mark. So that is Inferno of Torture. That is out now from Arrow Video.